when do triangles tile by reflection? Well, this question maybe seems a little bit unmotivated. It's basically just an excuse to be able to share some, I think, pretty awesome looking pictures that I made with you. So here is the uh, the setup. You've got three points, A, B, and C, and as three points, we'll do those three points form a triangle. Now, I'm gonna take that triangle, I'm gonna reflect it through its sides. So I'll take that point A, and I'll reflect it across the line BC. I get a new triangle. Now I'll do the same thing in the other two sides of the triangle. I'll take that triangle reflected across the one side, take that triangle reflected across the other side. Now, anytime in mathematics, anytime in life that you're doing some kind of procedure, well, you can ask yourself, what happens if I just keep on doing this procedure over and over and over and over and over and over again? What happens if I repeat this process? So let's take that triangle, let's reflect it through its three sides. We're gonna get more triangles, and we're gonna take those triangles and reflect those triangles through their sides. We're gonna get more triangles, and we're gonna reflect those triangles through their sides. Now, if you don't like to think about reflection here, you could think about unfolding, right? It looks a lot like I've got a little triangle and I'm just unfolding more copies of that triangle out of all the new triangles that I'm getting. Ooh, but look, now here in this particular case, what ended up happening? Well two copies of the triangle ended up overlapping. And to be able to kind of explore what happens uh, more generally here, I've made a, a more interactive version of this thing. So here's this more interactive version. I can move the vertices of the triangle around, and as I move the vertices of the triangle around, you can see uh, what happens to the, uh, to the reflections. And you know sometimes it looks kind of like garbage, but other times, if I were to say build an equilateral triangle, it's looking it's looking pretty good, right? It really the pieces really fit together nicely here. And there's some other special triangles that I can move to, where uh, the pieces sort of manage to fit together really well. And then at other times, you know, it looks a little bit a little bit crazy. But there's there's definitely something special going on for certain shapes of uh, of the triangles the reflected copies manage to uh to fit together they manage to to tile the plane let's take a closer look at some of those special cases all right well here i've got uh three points these uh these three points are the vertices of a 30 60 90 triangle and i'm gonna do that same kind of game i'm gonna reflect the triangles that i get through through each of their sides now, as I reflect them, I'm going to color them red and blue. It just makes it a little bit easier to see, I think, what is happening, so you can tell uh, the difference between the triangles as they uh, as they get reflected. So the blue triangles will reflect to give red triangles, and the red triangles reflect to give blue triangles, and they go back and forth like this. I think you can see then that these are fitting together perfectly. You know, I'm tiling the plane by reflecting the triangles through their sides, getting more triangles, reflecting those triangles through their sides, and so on. I could do the same kind of game with a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay, so here's the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And, uh, you know, it's the same kind of game. I'm going to take that triangle, reflect it through its sides. Um, and I can go a little bit faster here just so you can see what ends up happening. But again, we are tiling the plane by reflections. We're starting with a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And by reflecting that triangle through its three sides and reflecting the results through their sides and so on, we are tiling the plane. Pretty good. I mean, we're definitely seeing a pattern here. I mean, we, we are managing to tile the plane by reflections, by starting with a triangle and reflecting it through its edges. So let's try this again uh, with a 60-60-60 triangle, which I think normally people would call an equilateral triangle. So here's an equilateral triangle. And take that equilateral triangle, reflect it through its edges. And what we end up with is just the usual tiling of the plane by, by equilateral triangles. So we've seen this uh, in a few cases now, right? We started with uh, a 30-60-90 triangle, a 45-45-90 triangle, a 60-60-60, an equilateral triangle, and we managed to tile the plane. Are there any other triangles that we can use to tile the plane by reflections? That's our question now. So let's suppose that we've got a triangle which does tile the plane by reflections. And let's zoom in on one of the vertices and try to figure out what happens around that, around that vertex. So let's suppose that the angle uh, in the triangle there is theta. Now, as we reflect this triangle across its edges and reflect those triangles across their edges and so on, if this triangle is supposed to tile the plane by reflections, then eventually we're gonna close up. And that means we're just gonna get some number of copies of the angle theta that forms uh, 360 degrees. So an integer multiple of theta is 360 degrees. And what that means is that if a triangle is to tile the plane by reflections, then the angles in that triangle have to be 360 degrees divided by an integer. But we know something else about triangles. We know that the three angles in a triangle in the plane add up to 180 degrees. So let's use that fact. 
So here's a triangle ABC. We're imagining that that triangle tiles the plane. Now the angles in that triangle I'm calling alpha, beta, and gamma. And because it's a triangle in the plane, alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180 degrees. But in order for an integer number of those triangles to fit together around each vertex, we know that those angles each have to be 360 degrees divided by an integer. So we can replace alpha by 360 degrees divided by A, and beta by 360 degrees divided by B, and in gamma we can replace by 360 degrees divided by C. So we've got 360 degrees divided by A plus 360 degrees divided by B plus 360 degrees divided by C. That's 180 degrees. Now if I divide through by 360 degrees, I find out that 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C is equal to a half. And here, A, B, and C are just counting how many copies of this triangle fit together around each of those three vertices. So our quest for tiling the plane by reflections through, through the sides of a triangle has led us to this place. We want to find integers A, B, and C so that uh, 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C is equal to a half. Now, a triangle can't tell uh, how we've labeled its three sides, so we might as well put A, B, and C in order. We can assume that A is less than or equal to B is less than or equal to C. So here's 1 half. We're trying to build 1 half by adding together 1 over A, 1 over B, and 1 over C. Now, if A, B, and C were bigger than 6, that means that 1 over A and 1 over B and 1 over C would be less than a sixth, but that's no good because if I take something less than a sixth, add it to something less than a sixth, add it to something less than a sixth, I get something less than 1 half. So that's telling me that A can be at most 6. So here are the four possibilities. It could be that A equals 6. It could be that A equals 5. It could be that A equals 4 or it could be that a equals 3. Let's take a look at the case where a equals 6. Well, in that case, uh, 1 over b plus 1 over c has to be equal to a third, because a half minus a sixth is, is a third. But b and c also both have to be bigger than or equal to 6 in this case. And if they're actually bigger than 6, I'm in trouble, because then 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c doesn't make it all the way to 1 half. So the only possibility here is that b and c are also 6. Now we'll take a look at uh, the case where a equals 5. Now in this case, a half minus a fifth is 3 tenths. So that means 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 3 tenths. Now if b and c are both bigger than 6, I'm in trouble because a fifth plus something less than a sixth plus something less than a sixth doesn't get me all the way to 1 half. So that means that the only possibility for b is either 5 or 6. So let's split into those two cases now. Now when a equals 5 and b equals 5, c equals 10, and we're done. A fifth plus a fifth plus a tenth, that's a half. What about the situation where uh, b equals 6? Well, in that case, a equals 5, b equals 6, the leftover is 2 fifteenths, and we can't write 2 fifteenths as 1 over an integer. So we can just throw out that possibility. Now let's take a look at the situation where a equals 4. So in this case, uh, we've got a quarter left over. So we've got to get 1 over b plus 1 over c equal to a quarter. What if b and c were, uh, were too big? What if b and c were bigger than or equal to 9? Well, then we'd be in trouble because a quarter plus a ninth plus a ninth does not get us all the way to a half. So that tells us that there's only four possibilities. When a equals 4, the only four possibilities for b are b equals 5, b equals 6, b equals 7, or b equals 8. Now when b equals 5, the leftover is 1 20th, so that's a half minus a fourth minus a fifth. 1 20th is good. When b equals 6, uh, then the leftover is 1 12th. 1 12th is a half minus a fourth minus a sixth, and that's fine. c equals 12, that works. Now there is a problem when b equals 7. In that situation, we've got 3 28ths left over, and we can't write 3 28ths as 1 over c. And when b equals 8, then we've got a equals 4, b equals 8, c equals 8, and that works just fine. And as we notice, the b equals 7 case doesn't work, so we can throw that case away, and we're left with three possibilities when a equals 4 either uh, b equals 5, 6, or 8, and they all work with c equals 20, 12, and 8, respectively. 
Okay, we've got one more possibility for a. a could equal three. In that situation, we've got a sixth left over. So we've got to get one over b plus one over c equal to one sixth. We are in trouble if b equals 13 or anything bigger because a third plus a thirteenth plus a thirteenth doesn't make it all the way to one half. So b is less than or equal to 12, and we've got six possibilities. b equals 7, b equals 8, b equals 9, b equals 10, b equals 11, or b equals 12. Now we can compute what's left over. So when b equals 7, we've got a 42nd left over. When b equals 8, we've got a 24th left over. When b equals 9, we've got an 18th left over. When b equals 10, we've got a 15th left over. When b equals 11, we've got a 566th left over, and when b equals 12, we've got a 12th left over. Now that 5 over 66 is no good because there's no choice of c, so that 5 over 66 is equal to 1 over c. So I've got to throw out the possibility where a equals 3 and b equals 11. All right, well that was a bit of work, but we found all the solutions to 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c equals 1 half with a, b, and c positive integers. And here are the 10 solutions. All right, we've got 666, 5510, 488, 4612, 4520, 31212, 310, 15, 3918, 3824, and 3742. We know that anything which tiles the plane has to be on this list. So let's try these things and see which of them work. Well, we've already tried 666, right? 666 is just the equilateral triangle. We know the equilateral triangle tiles by reflections. What about the next one? F uh, 5510. Does 5510 work? Okay, so here's 5510. Oh, it's it's looking pretty good. I mean, it's definitely fitting together in a, in a nice way. And then, ah, so, so that definitely didn't work. So 5510 is out. We're going to remove 5510 from our list. What about 488? Well, we already saw 488 as well. That's just the right isosceles triangle, 45, 45, 90 triangle. So 488 works. What about 4612? Does that one work? Well, 4612, we already saw as well. 4612, that's the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And 4612 definitely is, is working. That one's fine. What about 4520? Does 4520 work? Well, here's 4520, the triangle for corresponding to 4520. And let's start unfolding it. And it, it is not working. So 4520 is out. We'll remove it. What about 31212? Does 31212 work? Well, let's take a look at 31212. Here's the triangle 31212. I mean, it's really 120 degrees at the top there. And the other two angles are both 30 degrees. And, and yeah, this one actually uh, does tile the plane by reflections. It's a little bit funny because, uh, you know, with, with three triangles meeting at that vertex there, the uh, red and blue alternate coloring that we have been using doesn't, uh, doesn't quite work anymore. But it does actually tile the plane, and it was not one of the uh, tilings by reflection that we saw earlier. So that's pretty cool. We found another way to tile the plane by uh, reflecting a triangle through its edges. What about 31015? Does 31015 work? Well, here's the triangle for uh, 31015, and we can start reflecting it through its edges, and we see that that fails. So 31015 does not tile. What about 3918? Well, here's the picture for 3918. We're watching it starting to go here, and it has failed. So 3918 does not tile by reflections. All right, so 3918 is no good. We can remove it. What about 3824? And 3824 does not tile by reflections. So we'll remove 3824. What about 3742? And 3742 does not tile by reflections. All right, so we'll remove 3742 as well. That does not, does not tile. So what are we left with? We've got four triangles that do tile. The equilateral triangle, the right isosceles triangle, the 45, 45, 90 triangle. We've got the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Those are the three that we saw at the beginning. And then through this computation, we found a fourth triangle that also tiles, uh, an isosceles triangle whose top angle is 120 degrees, so the other two sides uh, have angle uh, 30 degrees. That's the triangle uh, that's listed here. 3, 12, 12.
So these are the only four triangles that tile the plane by, by reflections. And I think that's a really cool result, uh, in part because the pictures are so compelling. Just seeing those triangles unfolding and, and tiling the plane is a very satisfying picture to see. But the other reason why this is interesting is because of the connection between the geometry on the one hand and some algebra on the other. I mean, this equation, 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c equals a half, that's an equation that you know you could give lots of people and they could try to play with that and try to find solutions. And I think it's a, just a wonderful thing to see how hiding in a certain amount of algebra are these you know corresponding geometric pictures. You know, these connections between algebra and geometry is just one of the reasons why mathematics is, is fundamentally so much fun.